Illuminated manuscripts are simply the richest and best preserved uh, example of painting throughout the Middle Ages and the early Renaissance. Uh, because no other painting medium, frescoes or uh, panel paintings, survive in such quantities and also in such exceptionally good condition. Cambridge is uh, exceptionally fortunate to have probably one of the largest and finest collections of Western illuminated manuscripts, uh, upward of 5,000. We have uh, material that covers the manuscript production over four millennia from the middle of the second millennium BC in Egypt. We have one of the finest examples of the Book of the Dead here at the Fitzwilliam Museum, all the way to 19th century Ottoman and Tibetan uh, and Indian material at the university library and in the colleges. So it is a remarkably rich collection. What we hope to do is uh, do core scientific non-invasive analysis and this is the real challenge in terms of technology. Uh, manuscripts are not sampled, that means it has to be non-invasive, non-destructive analysis. During the past 10 years especially, non-invasive techniques have really um, made a huge step forward. The technique we are using today is called fiber optic reflectance spectroscopy. Um, which means we're acquiring reflectance spectra in the visible and near-infrared range, which allow us to identify both pigments, organic and inorganic, and in some cases, paint binders. So this technique is only one of many that we can use and that we will be using in combination to obtain comprehensive analysis of the manuscripts. So besides the reflectance spectroscopy, we will be using X-ray fluorescence and Raman spectroscopy and imaging technique to obtain a complete view of what the materials composing the manuscripts really are. Some of the things we're interested in include underdrawing, um, that means the preparatory sketches that the artist would make before painting the miniature because they can be indicative of a specific style of an artist or a workshop as well as the use of specific pigments and pigment mixtures and combinations that may be unique to an artist or a workshop. Also the use of um, special paint binders such as egg yolk, egg tempera, which is more typical of panel painters, not so much of illuminators, but if used by illuminators can tell us that perhaps they were also panel painters. Manuscripts by the um, high and late Middle Ages were uh, a highly specialized form of art production. Uh, there were large numbers of people often involved, specialist scribes would pen the text, and then a team of artists would produce the images. And this could be a master working with associates and apprentices, or it could be a number of great artists coming together and making guest appearances in a manuscript. So art history has become an omnivorous discipline. What it hasn't done enough for manuscript studies is to bring in the scientific analysis. So very often while teaching my students, I would say, and the blue here is most probably ultramarine, the lapis lazuli, the richest, most expensive uh, source of blue throughout um, most of the history of painting, really. But I don't really know whether this is true. What this project would allow us to do is to be absolutely confident Identification of the materials and media used by artists would help us hopefully to identify individual artists and correct or make new attributions. It would also help us differentiate between different hands within a workshop or collaborative projects where artists from different workshops came together to work on the same manuscript. And it would also help us uh, get a better idea of the bigger picture. Where did these pigments come from? How far did they travel? What pigments were available to which artists, depending on what level of patronage they were working? For example, in the case of this book, The Book of Hours of Isabella Stewart, we know that several different artists collaborated to its illumination and were interested in trying to understand if we can identify which artist painted which page. On this one page in particular, scholars have always believed on stylistic grounds that this one miniature was painted later than the rest of the book. 
And now we can support this hypothesis on, scientif on a scientific basis. For example, by showing that the blue used in the Virgin's robe is azurite, as demonstrated by absorption bands, characteristic of azurite in the reflectance spectrum, while the blue in the other robes is lapis lazuli, ultramarine blue, as shown by, again, the way the reflectance rises in the near infrared. One thing we know about this book is that Isabella Stewart was not its first owner. Her heraldic arms, painted on several pages in this book, were painted over preceding illuminations. What we're aiming to do with the pigment analysis is help clarify the history of the book um, so that scholars may know more about who painted it, who it was painted for, and uh, what materials were used to paint it. The scientific analysis of illuminated manuscripts is a very novel field and we are going into it with a lot of excitement and a lot of trepidation. Um, it is terribly important because we can uh, gather scientific data, easily quantifiable data, which would help us establish where the manuscripts were made, when, by whom, for whom. And of course this core data would help us with the contextual analysis of uh, medieval manuscripts and the cultures that uh, produced them. Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism were all cultures of the book. So the ramifications of this project are enormous.